hard question to answer in what you're doing. The interesting world of the Internet of Things. Well, joining us to talk about that today is Harry Forbes, Senior Analyst at ARC Advisory Group. Harry, welcome. It's nice to be here. Harry, there seems to be an awful lot of hype about the Internet of Things. I guess my question to you is, what's driving all of that? Well, if you look at it, there are really a, a, some technological changes that are, that are causing it. And I would look at three things in particular. One of them is kind of a ubiquitous, high-quality Internet access. And this is coming from our, tele, our telecommunications infrastructure building out much more capable networks to support our smartphones, basically. And so what we have in terms of those kind of networks is the kind of connectivity we would have had in a wireline office environment a few years ago. Now we have that just about anywhere we go. So that's one factor that's driving it. A second factor that I would say is the devices themselves, the smart devices that are now being produced by the hundreds of millions a year. This gives incredible uh, economies of scale to a lot of uh, uh, technologies, and it makes them e you know, easily applicable to other areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I had to look at a third point, I would say that the change in, uh, to the cloud computing model is another factor, even though it's not directly in the, in the you, know, you might not picture it being there. Um, we're, in the, we're in a situation where our, our primary computing model is changing now, and that change is going to help to facilitate the integration of geographically diverse um, kinds of devices and sensors. I guess my question after hearing that uh, rather interesting overview is, why does this affect or impact industry? It's a good question, because it, it, it will have a lot of impact in, in many different areas, but what is particular about industry that is, that is being attractive? I would say, first of all, that industry, especially uh, capital-intensive or asset-intensive kinds of industries, are going to be very interested in these kind of technologies and solutions that are developed with them for the simple reason that these, the three technologies that I talked about have dr dropped in cost. So we've gone to a, a radically different price performance point than we were before. And so asset intensive industries where you have very large amounts of capital tied up in assets and whether they're making product or whether they're delivering product or whatever they are doing, that capital is tied up and being able to utilize and manage those assets better is going to have a high value proposition. And now these technologies have come down in price and, and up in performance. So that kind of change in the, in the environment, if you will, is going to make a big difference for any kind of asset intensive industry. Well, now, but let's dr drill down and talk about just what areas specifically might this impact uh, going forward? You know, really the hard question to answer is what areas it wouldn't impact. Hmm. Because wide it's, ranging. it's very wide ranging. And part of the reason for that is that the, uh, the change in the computing model, when we change to a cloud computing model, it's very, very disruptive. And a disruption like that can change a lot of business models that, that are well established. And the new models, what the successful new models will be, is still difficult to determine. Mm -hmm. So we can see very high potential for disruption in areas that are very fundamental, like software development and distribution. Many kinds of services that are now delivered will be delivered in a different way, and even products will be delivered as services in a different way. So in the manufacturing space, what we're seeing is a lot of manufacturers looking to suppliers in their supply chains and, and hoping that they can provide much higher levels of service and support for their operations in this new kind of technological environment. And that will be a challenge for, for the suppliers, but on the other hand, it's, it's also an opportunity in that those who serve their customers well and effectively using these new kinds of technologies are likely to do very well. History has shown that uh, when these uh, disruptive technologies enter into the marketplace, there can be, of course, those victims, if you will, who are unable to adapt, but so many opportunities for new entrants to get in there and do well, be successful. Right? Exactly, and, and 
this, another good point that you just raised is that the barriers to entry for many of these kind of activities, especially if you think about particular types of services, have really been lowered so that um, it's, it represents a kind of sea change that we haven't really seen in many, many, in, in a decade or so. So it will be disruptive, which is not always fun if you're being disrupted, but what that means is that there's a lot of potential for positive change. Well, highly interesting going forward. Harry, I know you're busy here at the uh, forum, but you took time to meet with us. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure. It's Harry Forbes, ARC Advisory Group, and speaking with us today about the Internet of Things. Well, thank you for watching.